Hello brothers and sisters and welcome to this video. It is Thursday the 3rd of October, 6.35 p.m. UK time. So this video is called Yom Kippur is 2019 or 5780, the year of Jubilee. I know a couple of you um, posted some, uh, some um, messages about the information that I said I was going to release and I will do that after uh, Yom Kippur and uh, the these feasts which are which are just happening here and uh, that's for something which is going to happen next year so there's no major rush and I wanted I want to make sure I deliver that properly but first is Yom Kippur and uh, first is uh, the um, this uh, we're obviously in the in the days of the 10 days of awe now between uh, Rosh Hashanah which is the head of the year and Yom Kippur which is the which is the holiest uh, Jewish uh, holiday or the holiest uh, day of the Lord as far as they as far as they are concerned one of the feasts of the Lord the holiest day for the Jewish people so Leviticus 25 uh, verses 9 then thou shalt cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month so that is coming up to um, that is coming up uh, to to Yom Kippur um, which is on the uh, which is on the 8th and the 9th of October. In the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. So we don't know when the Jubilee is for sure, and that is the reason why they sound the trumpet on Yom Kippur every year, because they're not quite sure exactly where the Jubilee is. And we have different markers, obviously, that we can go by. And uh, the the first marker is um, 1897, when it was the first Zionist Congress. And 50 years later, um, uh, Israel returned, but it wasn't exactly 50 years. And then, obviously, there's the Balfour Declaration. So do we go from the Balfour Declaration? Or do we go from when Israel came back? Or do we go from when uh, when Jerusalem was, uh, was recaptured by Israel? Obviously... 50 years that would be 2017 so it's not that one and uh it's not uh 1948 when israel came back because that would have been 2018 so the balfour declaration was 2018 to 2019 so so we're not 100 percent sure which year the the jubilee is uh is for certain but if the if the jubilee is is going to be when the rapture of the, of the church is which some some uh some people believe then um, then that would sound that trumpet would sound on Yom Kippur because it's the 10th day of the seventh month and um, if you've been with us uh, on this channel for a while you'll I did this uh, last year uh, and the year before um, but it's it's good to just go over it again so Kaduri's vision um, Kaduri's vision actually happened on Yom Kippur. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read from this uh, this met this book by Carl Gallops, uh, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and the Identity of the Messiah. Um, so he says in, uh, in chapter 1, he says, The heart of the story actually began in 2005 on a pleasant October afternoon at a very special Yom Kippur service in, Booker and, in the Bukharan Quarter, of Jerusalem, the ultra-Orthodox quarter is situated in the center of Jerusalem and is less than four miles northwest of the ancient old city, the site of Temple Mount. The aging rabbi knew the time had come to reveal his secret, a secret the size of an earthquake. Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri had just emerged from a lengthy trance-like state of meditation as his Jerusalem synagogue attenders looked on. He had been sitting in the teacher's seat with his hands gently shielding his eyes as, as he prayed. On that particular day, Rabbi Kaduri would not deliver the traditional Orthodox liturgy approved for this special feast of the Lord, which we're going to read. That is Leviticus 23, 26-32. That is to proclaim liberty throughout the land. So that is Yom Kippur to, to, to blow the shofar. Rather, at this service, he would break from the deeply entrenched protocol of the occasion and do something absolutely scandalous. He would preach. In due course, what the rabbi claimed to have been given through that heavenly vision would cause significant religious upheaval in Israel. It would also correspond to the fulfillment of certain biblical end-time prophecies. 
but could, the Kaduri ordeal wouldn't unfurl itself overnight, even though it had begun on that dramatic evening of Yom Kippur. So this is when, when it all started. The divine chess pieces were still being supernaturally moved into their places. The people in attendance that day could not have known that they would become the first witnesses to a stunning prophecy-connected event. And only in a few short weeks, Rabbi Kaduri's unexpected death would set into motion the spir spiritual mechanics that would ultimately shake the foundations of the, of the Judeo-Christian world, as well as the gates of hell itself. So, it all began on for uh, Yitzhak Kaduri on Yom Kippur. So, the vision occurred on Yom Kippur of 2005, which was Wednesday, Thursday, 12th to the 13th of October. Kaduri then died 107 days later, which was uh, on Shabbat, 28th of January, 2006. And just with reference to his, uh, his, um, his prophecy, which was, which was made a very long time ago, this was 40 years ago, this particular prophecy, which was not the prophecy of uh, the note, this, the, the note was, um, we covered that in the last uh, video and this one, but we'll just go over this again where he said, on the eve of the year 5780, the year of corrections, there will not be a government in Israel for an extended period, and the various camps will quarrel much without a decision on either side. And then on Rosh Hashanah itself, they will fight in heaven, the holy side against the side of evil, and God and his entourage will decide between them. And this is all I can say, and from here I swore not to reveal more secrets and hidden things. And in another interpretation, it says, on the eve of the fifth cycle, of a thousand years so the fifth cycle of a thousand years the year 5780 is a year of fixing there will be no government in israel so we know that that's that that portion of it is true for an extended period and the different camps will fight and argue a great deal without any conclusion in this way or or the other then on rosh hashanah the side of holiness will battle the side of darkness in heaven until god himself and his hosts will decide the issue and this is all i can say about the issue Rabbi Kaduri wrote, I've been sworn not to reveal any more secrets. And as I'm going to cover um, in this presentation, there are things which are written um, by the scribes which, to, which cover uh, Rosh Hashanah being um, the time of trial um, or, or to listen to a case as in um, the, the, the judgment. And then there is, the, uh, there is um there is Yom Kippur, which when the verdict is sealed, and that's also shown in Scripture. So that's what I'm going to go through in this as we come up to to um, to Yom Kippur. Okay, and then from his death, so his death was was one only 107 days after um, this uh, the Yom Kippur of 2005. This was relating to the message that he left about Yeshua being the the Messiah. Okay was very close towards the end of his life but this particular prophecy was was a very long time ago this uh, this um this one that we've just gone over and from his death to yom kippur that is this one coming up is five thousand and one days and if you read what it said there just before on the eve of the fifth cycle of a thousand years that's five thousand okay maybe it's a uh, the, the fifth cycle of a thousand years is actually coming up to the six thousand year, but I, I find it very interesting that his uh, that his his death was uh, on Yom Kippur was five thousand and one days prior to um, to his uh, his um, his death. Okay, so the trial and the verdict, um, which which I was referring to, so in Job. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? So, so Satan, when he says this, He's been walking. He's been walking to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down. And then God's response to that is to question Satan: Have you considered my servant Job? That's an indication that that um, the Satan, who is the accuser, he was he was accusing the people of the earth, and that that's why God says, "Have you considered my servant Job?" So we know that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, and that is obviously in Scripture. Um, in one Peter. 
5 verses 4, it says, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, this is Peter, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast fast in the faith, resist Satan, knowing that the same afflictions, Yom Kippur is about afflictions, are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And, and that is uh, something that we can all, we can all take a, a certain amount of comfort is that, is that we're all being afflicted. We're all suffering in, in, uh, in our own way, according to the word of God. And that's what, that's what, uh, that's the way that it should be. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. So, um, so Satan, Satan and, and the accuser of the brethren um, accuses us by day and by night, but there's a particular day which Job is referring to, which, which, uh, which is, which is Rosh Hashanah and and the Yom Kippur, as as you'll see. So in Job one twelve, then God says, and the Lord said to Satan, after um, Satan has then uh, said to uh, said to the Lord, he's the, the only reason why Job is loyal to you is because he's got all these all of this uh, cattle and all these assets and his family and so forth. And then in Job 1.12, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand, so don't kill him. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Okay, so that is the verdict. So we read in Job 1.6, the trial, Hast thou considered my servant Job? After uh, Satan has told God, he's accusing uh, the, uh, the, the, the people of the earth. And then God says, to, have you considered my ser servant Job? That's the trial. And then the verdict is that God says, there you go. And you can, he's, he's into your hands and you can do what you like with him. Just don't kill him. Okay. And the indication that this is a, this is something on, on a feast day is because in Job 2, 1, it says, and again, there was a day, it says exactly the same thing. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So this is obviously to do with uh, to 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 do with what has occurred with Job. And the Lord said unto Satan again, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down it. So that's what he's doing, seeking whom he may devour. That is the trial. Okay, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. You see, he's, this is God defending Job. Although thou movest, me, thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause, the accuser of our brethren. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath he will give for his life. But put forth thy hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh. So take his health away from him now, and he will curse thee to thy face. There's the trial. And then the verdict is, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. It makes it very clear here. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. That is on Yom Kippur. Okay, and then the third example for the trial and the verdict is in Zechariah with Joshua the high priest. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing on his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, Lord, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. There you go. There's the trial. And then the verdict comes in verse 4, And he answered and spake, this is the Lord, unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with the change of raiment. And I said, 
let them set a fair mitra on his upon his head so they set a fair mitra upon his head and clothed him with garments so we we have an example of job who was uh who was um who was allowed by god satan was allowed by god to to chase job for to test him and here we see uh the we see the other um we see the opposite so th this is um the high priest being being defended and um, being uh, being glorified okay so now i just want to go over um what is written in some of the jewish scribes they say that in yoma which is about yom kippur it says sin lies waiting at the door so this is the gemara this is this is what the scribes write in in the um in the in in yom kippur okay about about yom kippur Sin lies, sin lies in waiting at the door, and it is no wonder that men sin. And he asked him, what did Satan, the prosecutor, say about their sinning? Elijah said to him, Satan on Yom Kippur has no license to prosecute. From where is the idea derived? Okay, the numerical value of the letters that constitute the word Hasatan is 364. Hey has the value of 5, Sin has the value of 300. Tet has a value of 9, and Nun has the value of 50. 364 days of the sole year, which is 365 days long, Satan has license to prosecute. On the remaining days, so that's when the verdict is, Yom Kippur, he has no license to prosecute. Since that day is exalted above all others, there is no room for the accusations of Satan. So so I find it interesting that, um, that the... Uh, that the that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are obviously bound together and according to the scribes and um, the uh, traditional understanding of what happens in the heavenlies this is what occurs on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and Yom Kippur we know for a fact because of scripture is when uh, the Jubilee is when they will blow the trumpet on on the Jubilee uh, and let the captives go free and every man goes back to his land and liberty and we'll go over that scripture okay and then it says here also in the midrash, um, which we just get an, under, an understanding of what they, what they, how they understood it. It says, "But on Rosh Hashanah, I judge capital cases, whether for death or life, as you say in the shofar, blows of of Rav, which is the rabbi, and upon it is said about the provinces. But if you repent with a full heart, I will accept you and judge you favorably, as the gates of heaven. Okay, the gates of heaven are open, and I will hear your prayers." Since I observe from the windows, peer through the lattice. And you'll see there's a prayer that they do at the end of the Yom Kippur uh, service, which is called the closing, or the, um, the, um, the, which is the closing of the gates, or the, as you'll see, we'll go through that just now. So pursue the Lord in his being found, pursue the Lord while he may be found. And um, so as you can see, this is, this is another indication here about this difference between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And here in uh, Rosh Hashanah, actually in the, uh, in the um, Rosh Hashanah um, scribes themselves, where they wrote here, as we taught in the Bariata, all are judged on Rosh Hashanah and their judgment is sealed on Yom Kippur. So this is actually in the Talmud, okay? These are the words of Rabbi Mir. Yehuda says, All are judged on Rosh Hashanah, and their judgment is sealed each in its own proper time, on Pesach for the produce of the field, on Atzeret Shavuot for the fruits of the tree, on Festival Sukkot for water, and people are judged on Rosh Hashanah, and their judgment is sealed on Yom Kippur. So that's when they talk about the Book of Life, etc., etc. Okay, and then um, here again, this is just reference to uh, people talking about the shofar and Yom Kippur, and uh, and Satan who is confused by the shofar and the sounding of the trumpet, which um, which is sounded on uh, which is sounded for the uh, for the jubilee on uh, on Yom Kippur. So if this if the rapture of the church is going to happen at the jubilee, then then that would uh, that would occur on uh, on Yom Kippur. Okay, so uh, let's go back to here, 
and the war in heaven that uh, Yitzhak uh, Kaduri was talking about and in scripture, how uh, we can see that um, the, 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 the stuff that we've just gone over and those writings and who knows, you know, we can only, we can only glimpse uh, things from, from scripture and uh, assess other things to see, uh, to see if we can get a clearer picture of what's going on. And if the time comes and goes, then we'll know that wasn't it and we will continue looking for the coming of the Lord, because the rapture is just about to happen. Okay, the war in heaven, Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, Michael. Then Michael shall stand up, right? And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So, so if uh, Satan is accusing, everything is done. God does everything according to Scripture, according to um, according to the uh, the precepts of the conditions which He has laid out, and He will abide by the, His own laws which He has created. And, uh, and that means um, as Jesus as our advocate and him, uh, the shedding of his blood as, um, as, our, um, as, our, as our redemption means that we are his possession. And uh, there's nothing that Satan as the accuser of uh, the brethren can do or say against us. Praise God for that. Praise his mighty, mighty name. But there is coming a day when, when the accuser of the brethren is going to be silenced he's going to be kicked out and there's going to be no more space for him found in heaven and uh could that be that uh, the time of that is going to be on um on yom kippur uh, at the blast the final blast um the final trumpet that is sounded he stands before the woman to devour her child as soon as it is born but uh at the voice of the archangel and the and the shout and the, the trumpet is going to confuse him. There's nothing he's going to be able to do, okay? And we'll see if that's going to be on Yom Kippur, hopefully. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Hallelujah. For this corruptible, this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. 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 We have won the battle in Jesus name. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, okay? The law, the, the accuser of our brethren. It sounds like a court case that's going on, that we win because Jesus Christ is the advocate and the judge. Ha, ha, ha! We can't be beat. We've won. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise his mighty, mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Can't wait to see you. And then Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Redemption is drawing so very near. Redemption is drawing so very near. I hope you can hear. I hope you can hear. Redemption is drawing near. I'm excited, guys. I know that the rapture of the church is coming one day. One day that passes is one day closer. Yom Kippur and restitution. So this is what they uh, this is what they say at the Yom Kippur service. On the tenth day of this seventh month, that's coming up, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls. In their affliction, they shall seek me earnestly. That's what Jesus says. And they'll all be separate. The men and the women shall be separate. That's what uh, it says. 
that um, the house of David, and uh, they shall look unto me whom they have pierced, and in their affliction they shall seek me earnestly, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and ye shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it shall be, shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, shall the soul will I destroy from among his people. That same soul will I destroy. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. They call it the Sabbath of Sabbaths. And ye shall afflict your souls in, in the ninth day of the month at even. From even to even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. So that is uh, Yom Kippur. And then in Acts uh, 3.19, uh, Peter says again here, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. That seems to indicate a jubilee. Um, a jubilee year. The times of restitution of all things. And the jubilee, the jubilee trumpet sounds on Yom Kippur. Uh, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. And in Leviticus 25.10 it is confirmed. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you. And ye shall return every man unto his possession. And ye shall return every man unto his family. So the closing of the gates, the Neila, is the final prayer on, uh, on Yom Kippur that, that uh, the Jews pray. Neila is the fifth and final prayer of Yom Kippur. On an ordinary day, the Jews pray three times, evening, morning, and afternoon. On Shabbat holidays and on Rosh Kodesh, Jews have an additional fourth prayer, Musaf, and only on Yom Kippur is there a fifth prayer. The Neila means locking or closing, so it's the closing of the gates, and therefore indicates the closure of the ten days of Teshuvah, or repentance. Having the gates of repentance figuratively locked in, front of us as a poetically jarring image, one that is meant to existentially motivate us to intensify our prayers and petitions before it's too late. So that's what they, this is what they believe. In other words, the gate is being closed, but from this perspective, the Jews think that they are being ushered inside the gate, not locked outside. Okay, but uh, obviously we can, uh, we can glean certain other things from this if, uh, the raptures to fit in here, there's a door that's opening and there's a door that is very much closing. And there is a subtle and paradoxical allusion to this teaching in the fact that the Torah ark is actually kept open throughout the entire prayer. So in the synagogue, um, they will have the Torah ark, which is like a closet, which will hold the Torah scroll in it. And they open it and they leave it open um, throughout the entire prayer, which... Uh, which is a unique aspect of the Ni'ila that does not happen at any other time. So there's this opening of the ark, okay? And we know in the book of Revelation it talks about um, the, uh, the temple of God being opened. And uh, it's a, it is a, a fitting allusion to an opening of a door and, uh, and, and a subsequent closing of one. And though the actual day is not mentioned in the written Torah, it is explained in the oral tradition that Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the second tablets containing the Ten Commandments on Yom Kippur. So Moses uh, is thought to have come down on Yom Kippur, uh, and uh, that would obviously be fitting if he's the second witness and he comes with Elijah. This calendrical conjunction of the Torah and Teshuvah symbolizes God's forgiveness of the Jewish people after the terrible sin of the golden calf, which caused Moses to break the first tablets. So that's the broken law. Therefore, the first Yom Kippur in the desert, which preceded the laws given in Leviticus, was a day of great joy, forgiveness, and atonement. This transformative and revelatory energy is thus impressed upon all subsequent Yom Kippurs. And at the end of Yom Kippur, after the, the Na'ila, we blow the shofar. So this is the final trump. Um, as far as uh, 
the Yom Kippur is concerned and uh, the end of Teshuvah and also uh, the 50th year to proclaim liberty throughout the land. If this is the 50th year, then the Jubilee trumpet sounds on Yom Kippur. We blow the shofar to celebrate our victory over the prosecuting angel, a.k.a. Satan. Hmm. Well, uh, he might be kicked out. Um, this blowing of the shofar has the added value that it confounds or confuses Satan as he prepares to resume his regular job since it sounds uncannily similar to the great shofar that will be her heralded at the final redemption and put him out of business for good. So guys, that is uh, Yom Kippur and so I'm w waiting um, expectantly and hoping uh, for Yom Kippur. We will see if this is the Jubilee, then it's going to sound, um, then the trumpet will sound if it is going to be a redemption on the Jubilee of Jubilees. So it will be the 6,000th year and, uh, and wow, wouldn't that be quite something? So as far as the geopolitical stuff is concerned, um, Brexit, uh, you can see what's what's going on with Brexit. Uh, it's it's absolute craziness in the UK. Uh, in, you know, in, in, in the place where the King James version of the Bible was uh, was was written and uh, and compiled by uh, all those uh, pious men, 55 scholars. King James um, Bible was 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 quite something, quite an achievement in 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 history, and um, it's uh, you know Brexit is Brexit could be pointing to something, guys. Like Brexit and and the whole thing um, is 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 um, it's 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 it might be pointing to you know something that, that that's coming which is Crexit, you know, A, B, C, Crexit. So God may, may be making it obvious for us, could be, we'll see. And um, just the, the deadlock, which is in the British Parliament, where they're not prepared to uh, allow the people to have a general election to vote on this. It's just, uh, it's a democratic travesty, to be honest, not to trust the people. And then you've also got the stalemate, which is happening in uh, Israel. Uh, Rivlin has just stood up. Uh, today and pleaded with uh, the Knesset to try and form a unity government. He's saying that democracy is uh, is uh, is in a crisis. It's 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 a, it's an emergency. What's happening in uh, in Israel? Um, it's a complete stalemate, and um, there's no way out of a stalemate. That's the thing. There's there's no um, th there's just no resolution to it except for going for another uh, round of elections, which is something like 1.3 or 1.7 billion. Um, shekels, which uh, they, they can't really afford to do that at the moment. So there is an impasse which is in the British Parliament. There is an impasse which is in the Knesset. And uh, Donald Trump and the things which are going on with this impeachment proceedings, as you can see, guys, um, God says he will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all those that uh, trouble themselves with it. And Donald Trump is not exempt from that. I've said for a very long time that that uh, you can see the the, the, the problems that he's having uh, are are growing in in size with uh, the with the coming of this peace deal of the century, and uh, I, I think it's absolutely incredible to watch. I'm a, a neutral observer, and um, and uh, I, I find it absolutely fascinating what's going on. Uh, I, I I've said this before. I think America's in big trouble. Um, Regardless of uh, which side you support, um, America's in America's in big trouble. The polarization continues, the the hatred continues, um, and the uh, the the war the war uh, continues. And and all this is have all this is happening in the spiritual realm, guys. This is all spiritual warfare. Everything that's going on, and uh, we we will we will have much more clarity when uh, when we are. On the other side and we can see things um, not through a, do a, a glass darkly we're going to see how the spiritual realm works and understand these things and and the impacts that that they have and they have had on us and all the mysteries and the secrets and the um and the misunderstandings are going to be made clear to us 
uh, once we are glorified, there's so much, I believe, there's so much that we are going to understand and learn and be shown. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait for that day. So we watch with anticipation and we watch with interest and um, don't get involved in the hatred and uh, don't let it upset your spirit, guys. Stay at peace that uh, we are pilgrims passing through. We are Soyorners um, who, who are waving as we, um, as, we, as we progress through our journey towards eternity. Our destination is eternity. We're going to spend the rest of eternity with each other. And, um, and we should love one another according to, um, according to that, um, that, that truth that we are going to spend the rest of eternity with one another. So um, I love you guys. And uh, I've got a call coming through and I will see you in the sky. Mm -hmm.